In this video, we'll talk about how to create a custom carousal using LWC. So before building this, let's go and see what we're gonna build. So this is a carousal in which I have given three data, basically the three images, and you can navigate using the arrow on the right and the left hand side. So if you wanna go back, you can click here. If you wanna go further, you can click here. And right now it's auto slide with a timer of five second, I guess, or three second. And you can stop that. We'll take care of that in our component. Then you can show the heading. You can show the description. You can control the timer. Everything you can control. You can control the width of the arousal. We'll make it more configurable and reusable. So let's go to our VS Code and start building this component. So I'm in my VS Code and let's go and create the component. So I'm going to create two components. Basically, let's create first one and give this name a custom arousal. And I'm going to create another one and I'll give that name custom arousal wrapper. So the custom carousal will be our a reusable component and we're gonna test that component inside the custom carousal wrapper okay so this component we're going to deploy so for that let's go to its meta file and do the change in the configuration we'll say is exposed to true and we want this component to be available at all the targets app page home page and record page and for time being let's keep the javascript as it is js file and in the html let's embed our style component that is c hyphen custom hyphen carousal and in the custom carousal html will say will create a div and say hello i am custom carousal so we are just making sure our child component is embedded perfectly inside the parent component that is the custom carousel wrapper and now we are going to apply both the component and we'll place that in our app page so first i'll deploy my child component because child is required to deploy first before deploying to the parent component because parent is consuming the child and for that the child should be available you can deploy both together as well and thing is fine and i'll deploy my wrapper component now so now my both component has been deployed let's go to my org and in my org i already create a lightning page custom carousel using lwc i'll go and click edit page i'll go to gear icon and did the edit now we're going to place our component here and let's look for our component name custom and it's not showing here right now so let's refresh it once again sometime the caching issue so let's reload let's search it again custom carousel yes it is here sometime caching won't show us and we navigate to the page before it's deployed so it's always cross checked by refreshing the page so now we can able to see we able to place our component to the canvas area and the hello i am custom carousel is coming so it means the integration between parent child component is working fine so hit save let's go back so it means our component both components are deployed let's go back to our vs code and now let's start building our custom carousel component and for this what we can do is first we need some data so that we can build our carousel and for that what we can do is we can use some images and apply those images to static resources so let's go and deploy some images to static resources so let's go to the gear icon again click setup and here you select static and select static resources
and you can click new and we are uploading the folder that is already available in my Udemy's resources so I'll say carousel I'll upload this make it public and I'll give the name as carousel only and I can give some description as well images for carousel demo and hit save and now our static resources are ready now we have to consume these static resources to our component so let's go and consume that to consume that static resources i need to consume it in my parent component because i want to pass whatever the data i want to render directly to the custom carousel so the data i have to form in the parent so let's bring the static resources and to bring that we'll write import carousel images this is the alias that i'm gonna use for importing and we can import it from at the rate salesforce slash resource url slash our folder name and our folder name is carousel so we have uploaded the carousel there and now we call that path as carousel image and here i want to build some data i say the slides equal to my a slide should have an image and the images are carousel image is the path i'm using the back ticks here to form a url and slash carousel because it's a zip folder so inside the zip folder there will be another folder with the name carousel and under that i have a image name photo one dot jpg and i'll copy this i have total three images there so i'll say image photo two and photo three so i have this data i want this data to pass to the child component and to pass this data i can say slides data equal to slides so we are passing this data to the child component and the child component should able to catch the data with the property slides data so let's go and create that property inside the child component and get that slides data and here it should be camel case and now we want this property to be a global one so we make it we'll use at the rate api and we'll import that api from lwc package so now our child component will able to receive the data from the parent and now we're gonna use this data to build our carousel so we'll go with the simple flow first and we'll create a div and here we'll use template for each loop and in the loop will say run the loop on the slide data and each item in the loop should be called as slide and here what we can do is we can render the image so we can say image source is slide dot image and let's close that and before that we need a key key is very important for the looping so we can add some key here and right now we don't have any unique key i can keep this url itself as a key that's not a good approach but for time being i'm doing this okay so let's go and deploy this and deploy the wrapper and let's see whether we're able to render the three images on the screen or not it's deployed let's refresh the page and now you can see that we are able to render the three images first one the second one and the third one so all three images are rendering properly now we want these images to be 
in the carousel format so that only one image go at a time let's go to our vs code and fix this so till now we able to fetch the data from a static resource we able to connect our parent child relationship be able to render our images on the carousel component now the next task is to make our carousel workable and to achieve this scenario now what we can do is whatever the data is coming make only the first image visible and remaining image should be hidden and for that what we can do the best approach is to define the static classes on the top so we'll say const card visible classes i'll say this sls show SLDS show is the display block and similarly there is a class called SLDS hide that we use to hide the element and I'll say card hidden classes SLDS hide and now what we're gonna do we'll convert this property to a getter setter because the setter actual use case is when you want to modify the data that is coming from the parent and for that what we're gonna do is we'll say we'll take this and say this is the getter and the same name getter is there setter will receive the data and we'll run a loop that is map loop on the data that is coming say each item and index we want from this loop this loop run on each object that is this and from here what we want is just check first whether the index equal equal to zero which means is this the first image if yes then Take whatever is inside the index or item as it is and add few more things to this. One thing we want is the slide index. And slide index, we want it to start with one. So we'll say index plus one. Slide index is the unique index that we are giving to each object basically, just to make sure it's a unique identifier inside the object. Second thing we'll say card classes and we'll say the card class if it is the first one it should be visible class otherwise because it's a ternary operator so we have to give the other condition as well and we'll copy paste as it is and we'll change this visible class to hidden class so if it's the first element apply the class to otherwise hidden so only the first image will load at a time for the first time when we get the data and i'll store this data inside the this dot slides and i'm going to create a property that will be a local property and i initialize it with the empty array and this slide data will return this this dot slides so when the data comes we'll render or we'll modify the data and update the slides and in HTML, we are using slides data. It will go to the getter and fetch the slides that we have formed here. So let's go and see whether all images are coming or a single image only coming. We are deploying now. So it's deployed. Let's go and refresh our page. And it's still showing the three images because we haven't used those classes in our HTML. So let's go quickly to our HTML and quickly form that. And here I'll use another div. And in the div, I'll place my image. I'll move this image tag inside the div. And I'll take this key now out. And now we already have a unique identifier that we formed that is slide index that will be a unique index so i'll say key is the slide dot slide index 
and apart from that we want a class that will hide and show this so that class is light dot classes card classes and let's deploy this now now what will happen for the first time the SLDS show will come for the rest it will be SLDS hide and so only first image should be visible let's refresh this quickly and now you can see that only one image is available so it means we are able to successfully hide the other two images only the first image will show at a time or for the first time so let's go and proceed further so if i look at the workable demo i have this arrows and the text so let's work on the design now before the functionality so once the functionality is ready then we'll move to the uh, once the design is ready then we'll move to the functionality so let's finish the design of this header description arrows and the number let's go to our vs code and in the wrapper what we can do is we can pass some text as well as the description and we can call this as heading caption one and here we can write description we can say you can add description one here and similarly a copy paste to the other two objects this and i'll say this is the caption two this is the caption three and this is the third slide and this is the second slide and now anyhow this data is coming to our style component now we have to go and use this data so here what we can do is below the image we'll create a div we'll say the class description section or we can give more meaningful name as a text section text section and in this there are two things one is the header so it will be like light dot heading and the second one is the description that we can use div and say slide dot description and I want my header to be a little bit bigger and for that in SLDS there is a class for heading so I am using SLDX text heading large that will make my font size little bit larger and for the text I want the description to be of small size for that also we have a class in SLDS library that is SLDS text heading small so now we have our text ready we have our image we want some left and right arrow as well so we'll say a tag class i'll create a class previous and i'll give some unicode character here so that it will make an arrow on the screen i'll copy this and paste this below and use another character that will give you a forward error and we'll say it as a next class Right now we haven't created any css file this classes we are going to create soon we are just designing the layout right now and above the image if we look at the workable demo there is a number which number slide is running right now one out of three two out of three now you can see that number also we want so above the image we can create a save and here and print slide data uh, slide dot slide index index is the slide number basically and we want to show which number slide out of total slides and the total slides are slides data and to show the number of total slide we can use slide data dot length 
so till now the layout wise we are good let's deploy this right now it will not look good on the screen because we haven't applied anything specific to the styling so first i want to see whether all things are printing on the screen or not then we'll move to the styling part so i have refreshed the screen you can see the number is coming one out of three then the image and the arrows are coming below so now we have to align this so i'll go to the debugger to go debugger you can open the inspect it will open this we'll do some styling here itself the first styling that we have to focus right now before doing the styling i observe one more thing like our heading and description is not coming so let's go and fix that quickly and see why it's not coming mm, first let's deploy the wrapper just to make sure we deploy this component and i'll go heading is there i'll just copy the name and check whether i'm giving the right reference i'll take the description and i'll say it's the correct or oh, the spelling mistake is there in the description just make sure the description spelling is correct or the property name is correct whatever you are binding in the html let's deploy this again our wrapper let's deploy our child and let's see then it's coming on the screen or not and now let's go back and refresh the page okay. and now if go down we able to see our caption our description basically heading description and arrow everything is coming so let's style out first our text so click on this left small icon on the left to select an element click here and select the caption one and go to this class i'll zoom it a little bit the text section and to the text section what we'll do we'll say use position absolute and we'll say color should be of f2 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 that is little bit whitish color and then we can do the font size font size we can say font size of 15 pixel and check the size is getting reduced so the color is becoming white and we can say it should be at the bottom always it always be at bottom and we want the width to be of 100 percent and text should be always aligned center and we want our background to be of black color but the black should be little light black for that we're gonna use rgba r is red g is green blue is green if we pass all three these color as zero 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 it means it's a black color but if we pass our uh, opacity like it should be little bit transparent so we are giving that opacity number it range from zero to one and we are giving a number 0 0.7 right now we are able to see our uh, this thing and it's going up and what we can do is we'll just copy this styling that we have written you can see it here clearly position absolute what position will do it just take your element little above your relative position so let's define the relative position as well so we are telling to our this component you should not go outside to the your relative parent so we'll say position relative and if i go down our caption is below or the bottom of our relative component so let's go to our css and let's go and create the first css file i'll give this name custom arousal.css and i'll paste the styling that i have copied and i want this styling to be the text section and it's a class so i'll say dot text section and i'll apply this class i i'm using the position absolute so i need my parent to be relative 
and for that what I'm gonna do is I'll go to my HTML and in the top I'll give a class whatever it has whatever element has the position absolute it should not go outside this parent SLDS is related. so this is the position relative class basically and now our style will not go outside that if I go back now I am able to see the caption is coming a little bit bigger and the description is coming smaller everything is looking good now let's go and design our arrow icons that is previous and next for that what I'm gonna do I'll select again that select element icon and I click and I hover over those icons and these are the icons that I want to handle and for that what I can do is this is the previous class and the next class I'll say position absolute to my left icon then I'll say top should be 50% so it should come from top to the 50% now you can see the arrow is coming here and I want width to be auto which means take the width of your icon itself and I'll give some padding so that it not just touch the border of the image I'll give 16 pixel now you can see my icon has been moved little bit 16 pixel away from the image and then I want color to be white yeah. now it's looking good to me when I want the font width my arrow icon should little bit bolder so I'll give font width 700 now it become bolder and I can use the cursor pointer that will allow me to hover over icon I can give some border radius as well zero so three bits zero. and apart from that it looks to me I'll just copy paste as it is I'll go back to my CSS and I'll create a class previous and the same styling we need for the next class as well so we can say next and apart from that we want our next to go to the right side of the slider so what we can do is we'll apply some more style apart from the style so we'll say right zero so it should go to the right of the arousal and here the border radius should be three pixel zero zero and three pixel so how we read usually is zero for the top right bottom left so for the above one we are giving different border radius but for specifically to the next class we are giving different border radius let's deploy this now and see how it looks let's refresh the page now our arrows are coming perfectly fine here is the another arrow that is not visible right now but what we can do is on hover we can bring some black color background so let's go and do that i'll say whenever somebody hover over this class or on the next class what you do you just give this background the similar background that we are giving to the our text but i can increase opacity so that it looks more darker let's deploy this let's refresh the page
and now I hover see it's looking so good and if I go to the right hand side it also looking so good now you able to visualize clearly our arrow icons our background our image now we want to align our number so let's go and align the number we can align it the debugger itself similarly I click on this small icon I'll go to the number it select that element and to this what we're gonna do we'll say font size we want this font size to be 12 pixel it should be little smaller then it should be position absolute so that it comes to the top we can give some padding as well so that it not touch to the corner of the image we can give 8 pixel and 12 pixel so 8 pixel is for top and bottom and 12 pixel for left and right and apart from that we can say top should always be zero and yeah it looks okay to me and we can give the font or color we can give the same color that we are giving f2 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 now if i click outside somewhere first i'll copy this and paste it right now i have Okay, let's paste this and we'll don't we don't have any class here we'll say in the CSS we'll create a class right right numbers and we'll paste that styling that we have just copy paste and we'll apply that style or apply that class to the div that is showing that now we have slides number let's deploy and see whether it's coming perfectly fine or not so i refresh the page and now you're able to see one out of three is coming if i zoom it a little bit it's coming perfectly fine here you can see that so we are good now our basic layout and the styling is ready i'll close this and one more thing is there if i looked it here i have this dots here there is some space as well number and the styling is perfectly fine right now the heading and description only this dots are pending so let's go and build these dots as well so for the dots what we can do is outside this div will create a br tag so i can use a br tag or instead of br tag we'll just use a div tag here and for dots i'll i'll give a class first so that my dots will be align center so i'll say slds text align underscore center and within this what we want is the number of dots should be the number of data that we have inside the slides data so what we can do we'll just copy paste the same loop here and we can inside the loop what we can do is we can use the span span tag and in the span tag we can use a class that can form that circles on the screen and for that we can give some key here the key can be the same key that we are using in the above loop and now we want a class here for that we want the class to be dynamic the reason for dynamic classes is if you look at this working demo if the slide is selected so that circle is little darker otherwise all dots are or the circles are light light in color so for that what we can do is we can go back to our vs code and in the js on the top like we have defined two classes here we can create another two classes and we can say the class name is dot and 
not but when the class is visible basically if or we can say here dot visible class and dot hidden class so when the dot is visible which means the active dot is active then we can add two classes dot as well as active if it's not active then only the dot class and these two classes what we can do we can add it here and we can create another property we can say dot classes and we want when the page load the first class should be active so we can say dot visible classes otherwise it should be hidden classes and let's use this class on our loop here so i'll say class slide dot class and we have to define this classes now or create this classes dot inactive so let's go to our css file and let's create the dot uh, here i'll say dot we'll say height should be a 15 pixel then width should be 15 pixel it will make a square basically and what we want it to be a circle so we can use a class border radius 50 percent that will make us a circle apart from that we want the cursor to be a pointer here so that the hand will come when we hover or will come to the dot we want a background color and the background color i want is hash pb and we can give some margin as well so that our dots will not touch each other so we'll say top and bottom is okay but on the left hand side and we give two pixel margin and we can say display inline block anyhow this is span so we don't need display inline block i think so and what we want is whenever it's an active class then the background color should be 717171 and whenever somebody hover over the dot basically we want the same color so let's deploy this now and see whether our dots are coming or not whether the dots are looking correct or not let's refresh and see quickly and i'll go to the bottom i'm not able to see but space is coming so it means something wrong with the styling i'll go up and first i'll go to the dom and see whether the span is coming yes and the first one has the dot and active class i'll click it here and the background color is not coming the background not coming and might be the reason is because we have not done inline block and now you can see that the dots are coming perfectly fine so we have to add this class here go and add the class display inline block and let's deploy this let's refresh the page I'll go down. It's not coming. Let's refresh it quickly by clearing the cache. Now you can see that the things are coming. We want some padding around it. So what we can do is we can go here and we can use a SLDS class here, SLDS padding around of size medium. We can use horizontal as well or vertical if you want. Let it be around for time being. And let's deploy this again. Then there should be some space so that our dots will not touch the images directly. I'll come back and refresh the page. And if I go down, you can see the space is coming. That's perfectly fine. And now it's looking good to me. 
number is there correctly the dots are coming perfectly fine the description is coming perfectly fine so now let's focus on the logic so the logic is when i click on this next so the next image should come then i click next another next like third number if i go back it should go back and that similarly the number should automatically change so let's go and write the logic so the what we can do is first we can add the click handler we'll say on click back right and similarly for next can say forward slide let's go and create those method and say backslide and I'll copy this and I'll create a forward slide and now in the backslide and the forward slide we need to write some logic so what we can do here is whenever you click forward basically then our index should be incremented by one right so by default our index is always one slide index so what we can do is we can create a local property slide index and always initialize with it one and whenever somebody clicked on the forward slide what we're gonna do we'll say this dot slide index plus one and we'll store this inside a variable slide index the reason for not updating it here directly the slide index i'll tell you in a minute and same thing with the backslide what we're gonna do whenever somebody click just do a minus here and then we'll create a method we'll call it as slide selection handler and we'll apply pass the slide index that we have calculated by clicking the backslide or forward slide like by minus one or plus one and we'll create this handler here and this handler will catch the slide index i'll consider it as an id it will receive an id and here what we're gonna do we'll check whether the id or the slide index that is coming is greater than this dot slides dot length slides are nothing it's the array that has the whole data so here if the click number is more than the total slides then what we want we want it to go back to the one so we'll say this dot slide index equal to one that's why we are not updating this dot slides directly here we are just taking the new reference or a new number and we are calculating it here first scenario is this when the person click next 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 and it reaches to a point where the length is greater than the total slides then we'll move it back to the first slide second scenario else if if the user starts selecting previous 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 and it will go below one that what we can do is if you click a index that is less than one then immediately set your slide index to slides dot length so it will go to the last slide again otherwise whatever be the index that you have slide selected keep that index as it is so then we'll update the slide index with the index that you have selected so these are the three combination and now once we have this slide index we just need to copy the same thing again basically this just copy this syntax we'll say this dot slide equal to this we are running the loop on the this dot slides this dot slide will run the loop on the map we don't need a index here so if there are only one argument we can directly write the arrow function like this and we're gonna check whether the slide index equal equal to the item dot slide index so what we are checking here is the index that you have selected is equal equal to the index of the loop which basically this slide index that each object has a slide index now and this slide index we are adding it here right 
so if that each object has that index then whatever is there inside keep it as it is just update the card class and the dot class visible and for others make it hidden so this is how it gonna work out let's go and deploy this and see whether it's working or not so now it's deployed so the number is one of three i can click next it go to the two of three if i click next it's three of three and if i click again next the number will be four which means according to our logic it will move back to the number one and now it's back to one and if i click next it will go back to the three so our logic is working perfectly fine and based on that these numbers is also moving correctly now if i go to second the second circle is coming if i go to the third the third circle is coming everything is looking fine and what we can do is right now on click of this dots nothing is happening we want the slides to move on click of this dot but before that what i want is my slider to be little bit smaller it's too big every time we are scrolling so let's go and create a class quickly and on the top itself we'll say container we'll say width 700 pixel and we'll say margin auto and we'll use this class in the html and we'll say container and let's deploy this so just make sure our images are is of 700 pixel in width and it should be center aligned so that's why we are giving the margin auto so now i refresh the page now we able to see our slider more clear it's still working and now let's go and focus on these buttons or these dots on click of this also we want our slider to move so let's go back and we'll add some click handler to our dots as well so we can say on click current slide and we'll create this method current slide and what we want is by clicking on the dot i need the dot number and for that what i can do is i can say data dot uh, data hyphen id and slide unique number is the slide index that we are coming from the slide loop and a slide dot slide index and whenever we click on this this method gets called up it will receive an event and on the event what we can do is we'll say let we just copy paste the same thing and here this time it will be event dot target dot data set dot id and the important thing is we are doing mathematical operations so we want to confirm that this number that is coming is number so most of the time when the data comes from dom it always be a string so it's always good to convert this to a number and then it run in the same fashion so let's deploy this now it's deployed let's go and refresh the page and now if i click on this button now nothing is happening shift again clear the cache So it's not working let's quickly look at the code and even dot target dot data set spelling mistake data set it's not date set let's deploy this again let's refresh the page now 
now if i click on second third first it's working totally fine even our arrows are working totally fine so it looks good so now our carousel is ready one thing for the beautification we can do is we can add some padding in this so that it not looks so cluttered so let's quickly go and add a class the class we can add to this is same class that we added here sldes padding around apply this let's refresh the page And now it's looking far better our heading and our description so the one set of functionality is ready the manual functionality i want my slider to run automatically as well so let's go and implement that logic so to implement auto sliding what we can do is as soon as our page loads and we know only function that gets called on page load is connected callback and this is the lifecycle hook that gets called only once and we can run a set time set interval here and this set interval takes callback and the time and the time and data property on the top and we want this time to be configurable from the parent as well so we'll say slide timer and we'll create a constant here by default it should be 300 or 3000 millisecond which means three second so the slider is three seconds slide timer and we'll come here to our callback and we'll say this dot slide uh, slide timer and we can also convert this to number because parent can pass from the in the string as well so just to make sure it's a number we just convert into the number and it's always good to use window dot set interval instead of set interval because it support all sort of browsers old browser doesn't understand direct set interval and we'll store this into a property called this dot timer and this property will create it on the top this is a local property and the reason for storing the reference of the timer is when we go away from the component we should able to cancel the timer and what we want is every three second basically we are passing the timer we want every three second my function should get called which function this slide selection we will say this dot slide selection handler and the index we need to pass is every time the index should be slide index plus one so this gets called up every time and the first time the page loads the timer gets initiated so first time page load the first slide is loaded after three second index plus one the second slide will load then index plus two then the third slide will load like this it will work and what we want is whenever we'll go away from the component it's always a good practice to cancel the timer we'll say window dot clear interval and we'll pass the timer reference so it will cancel the timer so but this functionality will work always we want the user to have a control for this but first let's look at whether our automatic timer is working or not let's deploy this right now i'm not passing anything from the parent so default timer will only go and let's go and refresh this So it's the first one now after three seconds the second one then after three seconds the third one and then it will after three seconds the first one so it's working fine and manually is also working fine if i click manually 
but what I want is the user should have a control. So I'll go here and I'll create another property that will define whether the user want the auto scroll or not. So we'll say at the rate API enable auto scroll equal to false. So by default auto scroll will be false until unless the user wants it and the user to make it enable has to pass enable auto scroll and it should be hyphenated and the user should pass the slide timer as well user can pass it from here itself that's why we are checking converting the string to the number so the slide timer and auto scroll come it will come to here and the slide timer slide timer comes here 5000 in string it will convert into the number it runs fine but what we want is run the timer only when the auto enable auto scroll is true so what we can do is we can say if this dot auto scroll is there then only run pass this and similarly or disconnected callback as well it only runs when what enable auto scroll is there so let's deploy this let's deploy the parent as well so it's deployed now let's go and refresh the page now it should not scroll by three seconds it should scroll by after five seconds basically Now after 5 seconds the third image will come. Earlier it was pretty quick because we have given the default 3 seconds. Now it's taking the 5 seconds so it's working fine now. What I want is other feature because now we have be able to control whether we want it to enable it or disable it. If I don't give this thing, paste it here and comment it out and deploy this. It should not, it should stop the auto scroll basically. And it's deployed. Let's refresh the page. And now it will be remain on the first slide because the auto sliding option we have off. We have removed that tags from the parent component. So now you see it's thin scroll, but manually you can handle this. So that's good. Now the another feature we want or other control we want the, to the parent component is he should able to handle the width and to handle the width what we can do is and create another property global property I can say at the rate API custom width and this should be the default slider width that you want. And we can create here another constant on default and I want it to be 700 and I want another property that user to pass so full if user want the full width it should take this width and initially it's a false it takes the 700 pixel but if he wants the show full then it will go to the hundred percent and what we're gonna do is we'll create a getter let's say get max width and we'll return we'll check whether user want the show full if yes then our width should be 100 percent otherwise our width should be we'll say num uh, this dot custom width that user pass or if user pass he can otherwise the default will be 700 pixel and we'll add px in the end to convert into pixel and on the screen we're gonna use this dynamically so we'll say style equal to max width and from the css container we can remove this width 700 pixel let's deploy this and just make sure it's still 700 because component load it will get the default 700 show false uh, show full is false so it will go to this and it becomes 700 pixel 
it's deployed and now you can see that it's still 700 pixel now if i go to the parent component and say show full true show full and if you just add the attribute it means it's true let's deploy this and let's press this Now you can see that it's taking the hundred percent of the image and the still dots are there, everything is there. And if you want custom width, then you can just simply say in the attribute we'll say custom hyphen width and I want this to be of 200 this so now our slider should be of 200 pixel and if it will not pass anything it will be of 700 pixel let's go and refresh this and now you can see it's so small actually and the text is bigger but i just showed you you can control the width so that's how our component work i'll remove this and deploy this and now let's add some comments on the top just to make sure you how to use this component that's very important when we build a reusable component and i already have the comments ready so i'll just paste it out so i'll say whenever you add enable hyphen auto hyphen scroller to the component then auto scroll will be enabled you can set the slider time uh, timer default is 3000 millisecond then you can pass the slide data. the slide data should be in this format it should have an image text and the description it should be heading in our case now heading and description and then you can control the show full is for 100 percent width otherwise the custom width and custom width is used for controlling the width of the slide uh, slider manually basically so we have all the comments ready our component is deployed let's look at the final view of our component and right now it's looking 700 pixel good to me and we can add some transaction animation if you want we can give it a try let's go to our css and in the CSS, we can create some animation. So at the bottom, I create a class fade, and I'll say animation name. I want an animation that name is fade, and I want animation duration 1.5 second. It takes totally to complete its animation and i'll create keyframe basically key frames and keyframe is used for animation i'll say whenever this animation gets called this animation should trigger i'll say from opacity 0.4 it should go to opacity 1 let's see if it works and i can go to my js file and i can add a class fade here and fade here so let's deploy and see whether any animation comes or not let's refresh the page now if i click on next you can see there is some fade animation is coming earlier it was just sudden hide and show so this sort of animation you can play around with it so that's it now our carousel is ready everything is working fine and that's it for this video i'll see you in the next video